The short answer would be no, but uh, of course it's, it's not really a short answer. Um, I guess my opinion on the question of autonomy of architecture is, um, can be divided in, into two parts. I do believe still, and that may sound anachronistic, but I do believe in disciplinary um, identification. May, maybe not boundary, um, but something that defines a discipline. And in order to define a discipline, it means there has to be some part of it which is um, either independent, autonomous, um, can sort of historically develop within its own set of ideas and notions. So on that level, I would say yes, architecture is autonomous. But of course, these ideas are continuously being informed by everything that is outside of the boundaries of the discipline. Right? And therefore, the claim that somehow the discipline is um, you know, some safe haven where only, let's say, one type of experiment, which is completely embedded in the question of architectural, let's say, discipline history, um, can be tested and evolve without any impact and influence to the outside, I think is ridiculous. So on that level, of course, um, architecture would not be autonomous. So I think it's more about how we synthesize um, things like collaboration, um, knowledge coming from different fields, ideas that come from different fields, politics, all those things, how we synthesize them and give them an identity within our own discourse. Well, again, first of all, I mean, if you, if you uh, mention people like, you know, Kaufman and sort of a tradition of German-Austrian historians that were really impactful in the early 20th century all the way to the mid-20th century in terms of um, generating a discourse, um, we, we still own that, right? I mean, we cannot disown what, what is already part of our DNA. We can just make a decision to say, is it still useful? Um, how is it useful? Do we need to change it? If so, how do we change it? But we're inside that bubble, if we like it or not. So I think any, any claim that, well, that's done um, and we have total freedom, to me is an illusion. We have no total freedom. We have very little freedom. And um, there's a very long tradition. Again, it's sort of the, the, the Western tradition of architecture discourse, the one that you mentioned. And I think it, it would be a mistake to pretend that that one has any kind of universal value. It doesn't. It's a very specific lens through which these ideas have developed. However, it is a lens through which those ideas have been developed. And we are knowingly or not so knowingly, deliberately or not deliberately, every day basically say things and, and do things that is very strongly related to them. Um, so when you mention something like triple O or speculative realism, these ideas can also not be thought outside of obviously the things that came before it. And triple O is um, you know, clearly a, a critique on, let's say, ideas of subject to object correlations that go all the way back to Kant, right? Now it's a critique. But it is, it is unthinkable without Kant, let's say. So to me, it, the question would be then, do we think any of that stuff is important, relevant? Or do we try to identify um, you know, the territory of architecture as something that is completely outside of, of those kinds of thoughts? And in, in that case, again, I, I would tend to go with the former. I, I do believe that any kind of discourse um, that has built up over a period of time um, is already part of our DNA, and we deal with it. So, but that is by no means saying it is the only way of thinking about architecture, and it's also not saying it's the right way of thinking about architecture. So, but it, it is the stepping stone or the departure point through which we have to articulate our ideas going forward. Again, it's a yes and no answer. Um, I realize at this point in my life that if you dig deep enough, things very quickly start to connect again. If you don't, they often appear to be quite different from each other. Um, you say I, I'm coming from, from Europe, which is true. Um, I was educated in Germany. Uh, you mentioned people like Emil Kaufmann, Wittkover, and so forth, which are German-speaking historians. I discovered them when I came to America. Right? Um, so 
which is not even that surprising because actually the role in this particular set of, of people you mentioned all the way to Colin Rowe and Peter Eisenman, um, they go from Germany to England to America, right? So they bring the discourse around, so to speak. I caught up with those ideas here, not in Germany. In Germany, we looked at architecture quite differently, almost in a sort of straightforward, modernist, pragmatic way. Um, and, and theory was outside of it. Um, so I again, I don't think so much it's a matter of where one is. The bigger, the bigger questions that are more on a global level, I think also, again, if you dig deeper, they all stem from similar things, like Enlightenment thinking for 250 years, um, you know, the, the way that we have embraced technology as you know, the sort of way to know the world, um, the way how capitalism has spread all over the world. I mean, all of these things, obviously, when you look at them in the bigger picture, relate. And that's not different in China than, let's say, in Europe or in America. Right? They, have, they express themselves in very different ways. And of course, the situation is different. But we can still, I think, rightfully talk about all these uh, specific currents. My instinct is to look at academia as the opposite of practice. Um, academia, to me, if you talk about autonomy, that's the place, I think, where I would like to maintain a certain level of autonomy um, in order to develop ideas that may challenge, quote unquote, the real world or practice, rather than prepare for it. Now, it doesn't have to be this black and white, but I think to me, academia, particularly when it comes to grad and post-grad programs, um, is, is more about, yeah, challenging the status quo to a certain degree. Not widely, not necessarily in, in revolutionary terms, but certainly I, I don't think it's about making better architects that work better in the context of practice, because that would mean that we agree with the world of practice. Right? And I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I do, at least not wholesale. Right? I do think there's a lot of problems connected to, to the way how architectural practice in this day and age functions. So I think uh, academia at least gives us an opportunity to sort of widen the net within which we operate, or at least within which we think, and then from there try to influence the real world. So um, I have a problem, I guess I can say, with an academic or an institutional stance that would say um, the main objective would be to prepare students to sort of more easily fold into the world of practice. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if I, if I would sort of look at it so categorically. I mean, that on the surface, that makes sense. You train while you're doing your bachelor degree, so you basically learn the skill set to operate as an architect. However, in this day and age, I am not sure what the skill set necessary is to operate as an architect outside of the very mundane and very pragmatic skill set, how to operate, let's say, certain software, right? But that could be taught in many, many different forms. I don't know if you need a university to do that, right? I don't know if you need an academic setup to do that. Um, so it, it appears, particularly in America, I mean, if you look around, the vast majority of buildings are not being designed by architects. Everybody knows that. Um, it's either by developers or it's by contractors, and only a very small percentage is actually designed and, and, and uh, built by trained architects. So that, that already tells you something. Right? It tells you that the profession has been sort of pulled under our feet away and sort of distributed into other quote unquote fields and disciplines and so forth. Um, understanding that and maybe coming up with a plan how to um, address that, I think, is a very worthwhile academic objective? Well, I mean, I, I think that, that's one of the critical questions of our time. Right? I mean, um, sure, there is there's a dynamic out there, um, which is a political dynamic. It's, it's more than political even, I would say, just an economical dynamic, which seems to uh, marginalize architecture or sort of capital A architecture the way we understand it, because it will cost more money, right? because it will require more time, it will require more effort, and therefore, it, it demands some kind of um, 
you know, different, uh, you know, economical reward. If you don't get that, if you're not willing to give that, if you're standing on the other side, then the need for the architect diminishes. And, and I think that that's what we're seeing. Um, or the architect becomes a person who provides some kind of signature or an architecture that is a spectacle in some way, um, because again, the market knows how to um, sell that. Right? But does that mean we, are, we, we have no means left? Does it mean architecture, by definition, therefore, has to either become completely uh, separated in an ivory tower, like schools, um, or become totally complicit with the system? I hope not. Do I have an answer for it? No. I don't, I don't think I do. But just recognizing this, and again, maybe the institutions really are the places where through different kinds of pedagogies and different um, types of research and development and, let's say, evolution of what architecture is, could be a way to, you know, bring ourselves back into relevance. Um, I do think arch architecture is in crisis, but again, I say that coming from a very a disciplinary historical view of what architecture is. I look back in time um, and I compare what architecture means today, and um, I do feel that in the future and even in the present, um, the, the way how we impact it, culture in general and, and people in general, is diminishing. That's how I feel, um, based on the issues that we have just discussed. But I think, for instance, um, sort of the combination between um, new technologies and new media, computation in particular, um, together with sort of a globalism, um, where ideas can be easily distributed and um, sort of put in place, that combination is seemingly generating a lot of good-looking stuff everywhere, but it's hollowed out. I mean, that, that's how I feel about it. It's hollowed out because it has become, um, you know, sort of just a multiplication of one idea over a period of time, period of locations, a copy of the copy, and so forth, right? So um, if, if that's what provides capital A architecture in this day and age, um, we don't really need architects anymore, right? Other means provide for exactly that. If architecture uh, is becoming obsolete or in a crisis. And um, so what I was saying is um, it, the, the crisis to me right now seems to be perpetuated by sort of the, the way how, let's say, advanced computational techniques are being used and married to sort of globalist, you know, market-oriented um, trends. Bringing those two together, um, in the 90s, when I was a student, we thought that would enable us, right? It would sort of, the, the whole idea of being able to um, be unique as a designer and then be able to customize what you design in order to make it feasible for the economy out there. But what has happened instead is like um, rather than customization, um, what we see is again sort of a, a mentality of, of, of copying stuff, right? And um, there is no specificity to any kind of territory or locale. And um, so we're generating a lot of architecture, which on the surface looks interesting, but really to me has, has, has no foundation. And therefore it was sort of being swept away by the next generation of things that will come very soon. And maybe we have to accept that. Maybe that's just the situation we live in. But it's very different than, again, the sort of trajectory of a sort of historically developing architecture that builds up over time somewhere towards something. Maybe that is just gone. And we have to reestablish what we think is good architecture. <laughs>